Here's to the new us. I am the monster you created. You ripped out all my parts. Worst of all, for me to live, I gotta kill the part of me that saw. And I needed you more. By the end of Arkane's Arc 3, Powder's transformation into Jinx has been done. And whatever was left of Powder within her became forever lost. Both final episodes title and Sting and Ray Chan's song playing in the very last seconds of the season announced Jinx has become a monster, her parts ripped out and suggested someone is responsible. In today's video I want to discuss who created the monster within Jinx. And let me start by saying, I don't think there's one answer to that question, nor a correct one. As we all know, Arkane is most of all complex and nuanced. What I want to do is follow Jinx's story based on casualty principle, stating that all events necessarily have a cause. That rule indicates the existence of a logical relationship between two events, the cause and the effect, an action producing an outcome. Quite often the effect is another event's cause that leads to an effect of its own. And in Arkane's story, a logical chain of events led us one by one from Powder to Jinx. In the beginning of this tale, the very roots of Arkane's story, the powerful and the greedy rulers of Piltover created the canal to increase Piltover's trade routes, which ultimately led to ground collapsing, flooding lower parts of the city where now live the poor, which created the initial geographical division between Piltover and Zon that naturally led to increasing social injustices widely overlooked by the council for several years, among them Heimerdinger, head of the council, who for a long time turned a blind eye to Zon's citizens' issues, focusing on his own scientific ventures. But let's start elsewhere. Powder and Vi, two sisters, happily living in the streets of Zon. Despite it all, their parents struggled with poverty, local harsh conditions, but they had what mattered, each other. After Vander and Silco's bloody revolution caused by disagreeing with the arising injustices between Piltover and Zon, Vi and Powder's parents died. As a result, Vander dropped his gloves, symbol of his violence, chose the path of peace and adopted both Powder and Vi. That itself did not lead to creating a monster within Powder, at least not directly, but it planted a seed, led to her becoming more dependable on her sister Vi which does play a major role in this tragic story of her fall. Around the same time, young Jace Talis and his mother got caught up in a storm. A cloaked man arrived who used magic to warp them a safe distance away from the blizzard. The man left Jace the crystal he'd used for his spell. This encounter shaped young Jace's desire to learn more about magic and to turn his research later in his life to harness magic through science. Jace wanted to follow his inventive passions. Any inventor aimed to get a patron who'd be able to provide sufficient funds for the research, and that's exactly what Jace did. Incidentally, his patron turned out to be Cassandra Kuraman, matriarch of the, one of the wealthiest Piltover clans, member of Piltover's council, Caitlin's mother. Come to think of it, it's actually Caitlin's parents' money provided for Jace's research that led to him being able to spend them in whichever way he chose, and what he wished for was an equipment unavailable to him in the streets of Piltover, however available in the lanes of Zorn. His inventive passion and willingness to break rules became the cause. You really went to the Undercity to get these? Weren't you afraid? A little danger is worth the risk, don't you think? And so, young Jay Stalis headed down to Benzo's shop. He paid in gold and didn't even haggle. I charged him double price. <laughs> Sucker. But how did you know where he lived? Uh, followed him? How else? Echo shared his knowledge with Vi, Vander's adoptive daughter. At the time, Vi, very much like Vander prior his revolution, actively questioned the injustice between both cities and because of information given to her by Echo, she decided to go on a heist. We stay out of Piltover's business. Why? They've got plenty while we're down here scraping together coins. She took Milo, Clanger and, what's important, Powder told Powder that she's capable, told her to pack anything valuable that she finds. Keep an eye out for anything that looks valuable, Powder. Powder, upon researching the lab, found Jace's hexed crystals, took them with her and dropped them while running away, which caused an explosion of an entire building belonging to the Kiramans. 
she kept the rest of the crystals as ordered later on by Vi, which had far-going consequences of its own. Let's keep this our little secret. Vi's heist resulted in an extensive investigation led by Marcus and Grayson. Sheer size of their investigation was unprecedented, unmatched for. Grayson could not respect her deal with Vander not to interfere with Zoom's business any longer. A building was blown up. People got hurt. A culprit was needed. You know this crossed the line upstairs. Was anyone hurt? A building was blown to bits. What do you think? Vi, feeling responsible for the heist and its outcomes, decided to give herself up. But before she had a chance to, Vander, knowing he has no other choice as her father, saved her by willingly sacrificing himself. Silco immediately noticed an opportunity to shift power in Zone. He bought off Marcus, made a deal with him, showed up at the meeting that Vander set up, and had both Vanzo and Grayson killed. He also captured Vander. His plan was to tell people in Zone that Vander, the peacemaker, fled the city with his kids and retake power from him. Therefore, he needed all the kids eliminated. Vi decided to save Vander, but most of all, she decided to this time leave Powder behind. I need you to sit this one out, Powder. You're not coming. I'm not afraid. It's too dangerous. But family stick together, you said it yourself. I know what I said. I want to fight, I can help. You're not ready. Now going back to the very beginning of the story, we have to realize that ever since their parents died, Powder relied on Vi entirely. Apart from Vander, she had no other family and Vi served as protection shield from any monsters that might have come for her. No monster's gonna get you when I'm here. She was previously told by Vi that she is capable. She was even taken to the highest and told she can do it. However, now she heard she is not, in fact, ready. Another seed of doubt planted in Jinx's mind. If, at this point of the story, Vi decided to take Powder with her, then perhaps Powder wouldn't have caused the explosion leading to Vanda's death. They'd probably escape Silco's trap. As we know, they were merely seconds away from finding their way out. Powder wouldn't be taken in by Silco. Jinx wouldn't be born, at least not in this very moment. Vi wouldn't be captured. But perhaps Powder would have caused some other issues if Vi decided to take her with. Just like during the heist. It almost feels like a Greek tragedy. Vi takes Powder to the heist. She drops the crystal and causes the explosion. Vi doesn't take Powder to the rescue mission to save Vander. Powder, despite being told not to, still goes and, again, she causes an explosion. It feels inevitable, inescapable. Should we blame Vi then? Even though her decisions did lead to several of Powder's actions, she's not at fault directly. After all, none of her actions had foreseeable enough consequences to conclude such horrible outcome that was about to happen, logically speaking. Vi did make some questionable choices. Sure, she decided to go on a heist. Perhaps it's not unusual for the people of Zone to rob or commit crimes in the city of Piltover. But for sure, Vander taught her better than that. That path? This? It's not gonna solve your problems. She took Powder with her, told Powder to pack up anything valuable, which led to Powder taking the crystals and, in fact, led to not one, but both explosions Powder caused in Act 1. She told Powder to keep the crystals and not give them away to Vander, not to dispose them. Perhaps she felt like she needed some reward despite failing the heist. Doesn't matter. The stuff's gone. It's alright, Powder. At least you're okay. Every time she comes, something goes wrong. She jinxes every job. But she also should have realized that items she does not know can be potentially dangerous. These were in my pocket. They're from the apartment. What are they? You got it. You have to let me take that back. What is it? It's a gemstone. And finally, after having lost Vander and upon realizing it was Powder's doing, she slapped her called her a jinx, laying the foundation of a further transformation. Then she turned around and left. Vi was merely steps away from stopping it all from happening, changing their fate. If she came back immediately, took powder with her, they still could have escaped, found help within zone, or could have at the very least hide.
Vi would it have been captured by Marcus leading to her years of loneliness and isolation of Stillwater Cell. Powder wouldn't have been taken in by Silco who, despite the fact he planned to kill her, took her in. Seeing bits of his lost brotherhood to Vander and Powder's freshly lost sisterhood to Vi. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for several decisions made by Vi. It almost feels like years she spent in still water, neither free nor an actual former prisoner, were her own purgatory. However, obviously Vi couldn't have seen that taking Powder to the heist would have led to an explosion. She couldn't have seen telling her to keep the crystals and not taking her to the rescue mission would have cost one too. What she could have seen though was that slapping powder, calling her a jinx, in some ways understandable under the circumstances but still very harsh. Why did you leave me? Because you're a jinx, do you hear me? Would be in fact, in powder's eyes, an act of betrayal, an act of rejection difficult if not impossible to come back from. Powder's entire existence, despite how unhealthy it might have seemed, relied on Vi's approval. Losing that approval denied Powder's very essence. What was left was just a small bit of her, the sore part, Jinx. In Acts 2 and 3, Jinx questioned if Vi would ever be able to accept her the way she is now, the new her, ultimately coming to a conclusion, she's not. I thought, maybe you could love me like you used to. Even though I'm different. But the truth is Vi already rejected that side of powder, that distractible one, early on in Act 1, and unwillingly triggered some parts of her transformation. I told you to stay away. She did the best she could for her sister, but due to other circumstances, it just wasn't enough. Vi as a result did partially create a monster, though it was never her intention. In fact, when I think of the song's lyrics, I don't believe it's one person that caused her metamorphosis. It's no one, and it's everyone. The council, led by Hammerdinger and years of turning a blind eye to the injustices between Piltover and Zon. It's the actions of single characters who never could have foreseen their outcomes. Jesse's inventive passions leading him to the streets of Zon. Because a little danger is worth the risk, right? It's Echo telling Vi about the laboratory and finally, it's several decisions made by Vi herself that reasonably speaking, being just a kid back then, she was allowed to make without foreseeing their horrible consequences. But in some ways we need to be held accountable too. If it wasn't for the injustices that arose between Piltover and Zon, Vander and Silco wouldn't start a revolution. We were once one tribe. Now we are houses divided. Vi and Powder's parents wouldn't have died. The house wouldn't have happened. The building wouldn't have blown up. There would be no investigation, which ultimately led to Vander giving himself up. Without you down here, it all falls apart. It's a major case of what if, yet it still does not shake off a feeling that even different circumstances could have led to a similar or the same tragedy. After all, whether you take powder with you or not, she still causes an explosion because, perhaps, Arkane designed her to be a doomed character, very much like in Greek tragedy trying to escape her inevitable, unavoidable fate of becoming the worst version of herself, yet still trying to be accepted and loved. Thank you so much for watching. Please do let me know your thoughts on the subject. I'm actually curious. I spent a lot of time thinking about what's the cause and what's the effect between all these events. And it's incredibly interesting. Of course, this is a major case of what if, like I said. There's plenty of other arcane essays I made, so do stick around, I appreciate it. And I also have been doing a deep dive into the League of Legends lore, so to understand arcane just a little bit better. Stay safe guys, bye.